through stress involved, but at this school we're happy. We all work together, we work hard and we get on with it, we do a good job. As an MQT, I think you've just got to make sure that keep in contact with people from university, they're all in the same boat as you, you're going to be doing this job. I mean, don't get me wrong, you've got your PPA time, which is 10% to get on with your planning, assessment and preparation, but then you've also got an additional 10% as an MQT to work on standards, making sure you're up to scratch and you continue professional development. Everyone in the school, I've been an MQT before, year six has been an MQT before, every teacher in here has been an MQT before, we've been there. Don't be afraid to come for support, come speak to us and myself. I've been through a lot of NQTs. I'm an NQT teacher here at the school. I got my job much quicker than the rest of my university friends. I believe that's because the population's rising and there's much more children going into primary schools. I believe there's 15% more since 2007, which means that there, need, there is a, more, there's a need for teachers like me to be going into schools. There's lots of benefits being a teacher. You're always inspiring the children to be what they want to be and giving them the opportunity in life to also do that. Uh, also, I'd love to be a leader in the community, making a difference, and hopefully some people might even call me a miracle worker. Every day will be different, and as much as the job will be challenging, it'll also be so rewarding. Also, the summers will be all right too. Well, I'm being really good about this year, you know. Yeah. You know goes out, Morgan's in, and she seems to respect the dedication of the teachers and she actually is referred to us as heroes. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying, but I think she's been in three hours, nearly two years now, she's done, done a lot. I feel that she's done nothing to strip and get rid of the workload issue. Mm, I mean, the thing is, when Go was in, he made pension cuts, pay freezes, there was the constant pressure from the government in regards to inspection, and he never really decreased the ever increasing workload. Yeah. They the professional attracted. And actually, he so fixated on improving the international rankings, the Office of Inspectors have become much more, much more stricter in their inspections. Yeah, and when Nicky Morgan did the workload survey, you know, the four main issues that were too much work for were Ofsted inspections, mm. uh, regarding data marking and list planning. Exactly. And to be fair, she has announced that Ofsted aren't allowed to change their, their inspection work throughout the year unless it's absolutely necessary. Yeah, and she's going to do a workload survey every two years. That's good stuff, yeah. Mm. You're right, Chris, how are you doing? Oh, good morning, guys. Right? How have you been? Oh, it's been such a good day. It's been oh, so great. great. The lesson plan went straight. It was all on point. It was mm -hmm. fantastic. I've been, I'm going to do the uh, nativity play this year. Oh, you really? taking it off. I'm really it off. It's going to be a bit of extra stress, but you know, it's, I, I've been happy with my day. The children have been behaving so well. You see a lot of potential. Yeah, I think it's going to be a good year. I, I feel great about my years. You know, last year, these six results in the sets were sensational. They were fantastic. You know, Mr. Brent, he gave me, you know, the recognition I deserve. You know, I've got a good reputation with him now. You know, he gave me a pay rise, and I feel very secure in my employment. I feel very safe. Mm. And to be fair, I'm feeling really good at the moment. Me and my husband are getting on really well. Um, you know, we've got a really good affiliation with the children. Everything's working great, and I'm feeling really good about myself. You know, I'm eating lunch. Yeah. I'm having three meals a day. Oh. Just brilliant. Where's Tim? He's got a part time job. What time? What's 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 part time? So I had the baby in June and decided it'd be best for me to go part-time for September because the hours would be much more convenient. And obviously I'm hoping it's going to decrease my stress and uh, because I'm not going to have as much workload. Part-time working has been found to reduce teacher turnover uh, because people are more interested in staying in the role because of the decrease in stress. Ofsted actually mentioned that a lot of part-time teachers are significantly above the national average for teaching um, because they've got more time to actually do things like planning and uh, I'm aware that a lot of the money from pupil premium is uh, spent on employing qualified teachers to come in and raise the standards on a part-time basis. I do know it's got an adverse effect sometimes because if you're not in the classroom all the time, it doesn't always work best for all children. And as much as it benefits me right now, uh, I am obviously taking a 40% pay cut. Now I've gone part-time, I'm not as stressed. I noticed that my colleagues aren't stressed at the moment, but as I know the job is extremely stressful, and uh, stress is actually, it's a more of a mental and emotional feeling that is uh, usually caused by life's demands and especially workload. Uh, new recent surveys found that no, over the majority of teachers have said that their workload has caused them to consider to um, leave the profession and uh, actually it's been thought of being one of the most stressful professions in Britain. And um, another recent survey said that 76% says stress is affecting health and 56% said if their job wasn't as stressful, they'd be much better at it. Oasis, he wants to 
to be jolted, but he's clearly a donkey. And this exhibit is doing my head in. And I've also got my lesson planning, my data collection, and my assessment. I yeah, yeah. What to do. We're glad it's always been an issue for teachers. Well, I'm working 60 hour weeks, sometimes even 70 hour weeks. Yeah, I read an article in here that said uh, since 2010 there's been attempts at rising that as well. 53% of teachers are looking at quitting the profession due to workload being an issue. You know, Nikki Morgan, she did the work for that challenge, but from it, she got information that ministers already knew about the issues related to work for that. You know, I still feel fine about my job, I feel secure, but Mr. Brent is, I think my reputation has gone down with him. He's taken us down. I'm really struggling with new levels. <clears throat> You'll see, the removal of levels is a good thing because, at the end of the day, it had a negative effect on schools. People were always talking about it. However, in a recent survey of 1,000 head teachers, 82% said it's had a negative effect on their school. So I can understand where you're coming from. Yeah, well, we've got Ofsted coming up as well, and I'm just really stressed about all the data that we need yeah. to do for that. Yeah, Ofsted confirmed that they're going to be doing frequent but shorter inspections in school, giving clear performance drawings. Mm. And to be fair, the two main causes of the Ofsted problem is that they can make or break a school quite easily, and there's sometimes inconsistency in what they're saying to people. They've got different demands every time they come. Are you coming for PPAs? I am this you? afternoon. Oh, good PPAs are going send these days. Yes. Across the whole year, there is 195 days that a teacher is contractually obliged to be in school. But within these days, there is planning, preparation and assessment time, PPA, which means that I'm not teaching any more than 90% in the classroom. It means that I can get on with other things that I need to do, my data, my planning, preparation, assessment. It means that I can do that not in the classroom. It means I can get away from it and just crack on with it. NQTs get this as well. It's a guarantee for any teacher that's full time since September of 2005. Um, it's really good because it means that I can get a good work life balance. I can go home and see the kids, which I couldn't necessarily do a lot, and it means that I'm not worrying so much. But my only concern with it is that uh, the teaching can be surpassed sometimes. It isn't always done by teachers. But apart from that, I think it's excellent. I mean, looking at your data, I think I think it's clear that you aren't meeting the needs of every child within your class, and that's so important. It was such a professional part of the role of a teacher, and I'm looking at you, I'm looking at your eyes, and I just I don't see any belief in yourself. You know, I don't see the belief that I see in the other teachers in the school. You know, self belief and professionalism are fundamental in the job for your motivation, your psychological well being. You know, we were discussing in October. We were talking about performance related pay and pay rise, you know, it happens across the world, it happens in a lot of different countries now and in October I was really positive, I thought, you know, yeah, I think this lad is doing a good job, I think he could get that rise, but it's a couple of months later, I'm just not seeing any improvement, I'm just not seeing it, you know, it's something that it might not be affecting you, but a lot of teachers get stressed about this and I feel that it's so important to make sure that you do get that rise, because if you don't, you're going to get fed up and you might leave the job, which means classes are going to get bigger, you know, it doesn't always motivate everyone, it doesn't performance related pay, but it is something to do because you're getting rewarded for the work you're doing. You know, I love it when people do well because it means I can reward them by giving them a bit more pay. I, it upsets me, it means it gives me a reason to call you in and say you're not doing a good job, you know, like, like I'm doing now. I mean, I look back on these first few months that you've had and I, just, I feel I might have let you down a little bit, you know, like, I'm meant to be a mentor, I feel that like I gave you the nativity play, it was a lot of work in your first year. I give you a, a lunchtime club and an after school club and I feel that like I'm just giving you too much too fast, you know. I feel like I've let you down. You know, to get to the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. I'm just burnt out. I'm stressed physically and emotionally. I, I wouldn't mind if it was just like a week of pure stress, but it's been three months of stress. I'm not eating with the other teachers. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking to the teachers about teaching planning. I'm, I'm just complaining all the time to my family, to the other teachers. I'm, I don't have the same friends I've got anymore. The spark is gone for teaching. And about performance related pay, I, the, the pay, we spoke before, the pay wasn't important to me. It's, it's inspiring the children. I don't feel like I'm even doing that anymore. Before the documentary process, I realised you know, there was a lot to do for a teacher in terms of workload, but I don't think I realised quite how much, and if I'm being honest, it does scare me a bit going into my NQT year. I 
after doing the documentary, I believe that teachers either need a pay rise or need to have less workload. When I was on placement, the workload didn't affect my personal life, but once, after doing this documentary, I don't think I realised it would affect me once I'm in the job. So I'm going to make an effort to make sure I balance my time. 